Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, I am Dr. Medora D'Souza Dias from Goa Medical College and we are going to be talking about today's topic of blood vessel histology. Some of the clinical aspects in today's lecture are going to be aneurysm of the abdominal aorta, atherosclerotic lesions and venous thrombosis. The divisions of the circulatory system include the heart and the blood vessels. The blood vessels are divided into a macrovasculature and a microvasculature. Macrovasculature means vessels more than 0.1 millimeters in diameter. These include large arterioles, muscular and elastic arteries, and muscular veins. Arteries, as we all know, are vessels carrying oxygenated and nutrient rich blood from the heart to body tissues. Veins on the other hand, carry deoxygenated blood from the capillaries and from the tissues towards the heart. Microvasculature includes arterioles which have thinner walls and the capillaries which form a rich plexus or anastomosis in body tissues. If you talk about the walls of a blood vessel, what goes to make up the layers in the wall of a blood vessel? There are three layers. Always remember tunica intima, tunica media and tunica adventitia. The meaning of the word tunica means a covering. The tunica intima is the innermost covering made up of a single layer of endothelial squamous cells, a basal lamina and a internal elastic lamina. The tunica media is muscular and elastic and the tunica adventitia is made up of collagen fibers and it is the outermost covering. Here we can see the basic structure of an artery. The innermost layer is an endothelium made up of a single layer of flattened or squamous cells resting on the next layer which is the basement membrane also called the basal lamina. Outer to this the yellow that you see here is a tissue called the subendothelial connective tissue. Still outer will be the green colored layer here which is the internal elastic lamina. All these four layers the endothelium, the basal lamina, the subendothelial connective tissue and the internal elastic lamina go to form tunica intima. The next layer is the tunica media. The tunica media is a thick muscular and elastic layer outer to which is the external elastic lamina and the outermost layer that we can see here is the tunica adventitia. So this is the tunica adventitia and there are vessels in it called Vesa Vesorum. What is the basic structure of the wall of an artery? So the artery will also have a tunica intima, a tunica media and a tunica adventitia. Remember that arteries have a very thick tunica media compared to veins that have a thicker tunica adventitia. Tunica intima is made up of an endothelium, a basal lamina, a subendothelial connective tissue and an internal elastic lamina. The media we said it's made up of a thickest layer of concentrically arranged. When we say concentric we mean it goes around the lumen. Concentrically arranged smooth muscle cells as well as elastic fibers. There are also reticular fibers. The tunica adventitia is made up of collagen fibers 
and these run along the axis of a blood vessel or along the line of flow of a blood vessel. What is the basic structure of an artery? As we are continuing, it has an endothelium which is made up of a single layer of flattened polygonal cells with their long axis along the axis of the artery. These cells form a barrier between the blood in the lumen and the wall of the artery and they come in contact with the blood cells in the lumen of the artery. Besides protection, they have other functions like storage of an enzyme like angiotensin converting enzyme as well as secretion of type 2, 4, 5 collagen endothelin for Willebrin factor. The subendothelial connective tissue is thin, it is also called the lamina propria and in the smallest vessels it is replaced by cells called pericytes. The smooth muscle cells are fusiform and they run concentrically across the length of the blood vessel. Their contraction decreases the luminal diameter. So when a smooth muscle cell which runs around a blood vessel, it will narrow the lumen of the blood vessel and increases the pressure proximally. These smooth muscle cells are the ones that undergo a fatty degeneration and can change into forming an atheromatous plaque. How do we classify arteries? We can classify arteries based on the thickness of their wall, their diameter or the component of elastic or muscular tissue in their media. So uh, arteries are classified as large size or conducting arteries also called elastic arteries. The second type are the muscular distributing arteries which are medium sized and the third type are the smaller sized also called arterioles. Let's study each of these three types of arteries we have just mentioned. Coming to the first type which is the large sized elastic artery. These are also called the conducting arteries and these are the arteries like the aorta and the pulmonary trunk which are connected to the heart as well as their main branches. Their diameter is more than 1 centimeter. They have a very large lumen and the thickness of the wall is less than the luminal diameter. The tunica intima in these vessels is much thicker than in the medium sized arteries but the internal elastic lamina is not prominent because there are a lot of elastic fibers in the tunica media. Whereas the internal elastic lamina in medium sized arteries is more prominent because medium sized arteries have less elastic tissue in their tunica media. The tunica media in the aorta has more than 50 concentrically arranged elastic laminae. Tunica adventitia is poorly developed but it also has vasa vasorum. If you look at the large sized artery in a high power view, you can see the endothelium and the tunica intima and a very very thick tunica media. Now, the tunica media has more of elastic fibers and less of smooth muscle fibers. So you do not notice a very prominent internal elastic lamina. Outermost is the tunica adventitia. If you look at the diagram here, this is the endothelium on a basal lamina, subendothelial connective tissue, a less prominent internal elastic lamina compared to medium sized artery, a lot of elastic fibers in the tunica media along with smooth muscle cells and a very thick tunica media compared to the much thinner tunica adventitia. Notice the vasovasorum in the tunica adventitia. You might wonder why we have so much of elastic tissue in the large sized arteries. These large sized arteries are close to the heart and during systole or rather during contraction of the heart ventricles, blood is pushed into these vessels with high pressures. 
To accommodate these pressures, the lumen of the artery increases as the walls bulge. As diastole takes place and the pressures in the heart drop, the lumen comes back to normal by a feature called elastic recoil. So with elastic recoil, the lumen comes back to its normal size and this maintains the steady flow of blood through the conducting arteries. Next we come to the medium sized artery. These are also called distributing arteries. They are slightly smaller, examples being the brachial, the axillary artery, the femoral artery. Their wall thickness is more than the luminal diameter. The tunica intima is slightly thinner than in elastic arteries, but the elastic laminae are more prominent here because there is less elastic fibers in the tunica media. The tunica media gradually has a reduction in the elastic content and an increase in the smooth muscle content. So in medium sized arteries, the smooth muscle content increases to about 75%. There are up to 40 layers of smooth muscle cells along with a few elastic fibers. Tunica adventitia has got connective tissue and some vasa vasorum and nerve. Here is a higher power view of a medium sized artery. You can see a very prominent internal elastic lamina and the fine tissue inner to this is the endothelium along with the subendothelial tissue. This thick layer here is the tunica media and that is the tunica adventitia. The illustration explains it better. So you can see a well-defined lumen with an endothelium, a basal lamina, subendothelial connective tissue, a very well seen or a very prominent internal elastic lamina, smooth muscle cells more prominent in the media and an adventitia. You may be wondering why is the internal elastic lamina so wavy? During rigor mortis, there is a contraction of muscle and this contraction includes the smooth muscle which makes the elastic fibers become wavy as the entire diameter of this vessel is going to reduce. The last are the small sized arteries which are also called arterioles. These are smaller in size and divided into two types. There are the larger muscular arterioles which are 100 to 50 micrometers in diameter and the smaller terminal arterioles which are less than 50 micrometers in diameter. All their layers are thinner. The tunica intima is thin with an endothelium and a very thin internal elastic lamina in the larger sized arterioles. Tunica media may have just one layer or maybe two layers of smooth muscle cells. These act as pre-capillary sphincters in the terminal arterioles and they regulate blood flow into the capillary plexus. There is no internal elastic lamina. The tunica adventitia is very very thin if it is seen. It is usually absent. Here you can see this is an arteriole and if you take a larger view of the arteriole you can see the smooth muscle cells in its wall and that's your endothelial cell. There's one endothelial cell here and there's another endothelial cell here. This is the lumen of the arteriole. Let's look at some of the differences between these vessels. What are the differences between the muscular arterioles and true arteries? Arterioles have a smaller diameter. They have no internal elastic lamina but they have a few layers of smooth muscle in their media, one to two layers. If you look at the differences between terminal arterioles versus the muscular arterioles, terminal arterioles are smaller, they have a thinner layer of smooth muscle in their wall and they give off branches called meta-arterioles which enter the capillary bed. They have pre-capillary sphincters which regulate blood flow into the capillary plexus. Let's summarize with a table the 
descriptions and the differences between the three types of arteries we have just described. The elastic artery, the muscular artery and the arterial. If you look at the tunica intima, the elastic artery has an endothelium, subendothelial connective tissue and it has a less prominent internal elastic lamina. The muscular artery on the other hand has a very well developed internal elastic lamina. The arteriole has a very poorly developed internal elastic lamina. Comparing the media, the media has mainly elastic fibers in large size artery, smooth muscle fibers in muscular artery and one to three layers of smooth muscle cells in the arteriole. The adventitia is thin in elastic artery but it has vasa vasorum and lymphatics and nerves. It's thinner in the muscular artery but also having vasa vasorum but not prominent. In the arteriole it is very very thi thin if it is seen. Capillaries these are the smallest blood vessels having a diameter of 7 to 9 micrometers and a length of around less than 50 micrometers. If you take all the capillaries in the body, they can cover a distance of about 96,000 kilometers. They are so thin that exchange of nutrients and oxygen can take place across their wall. If you take a cut section like you see here, we have taken a capillary and opened it up. So that's a tube formed by a single layer of endothelial cells resting on a basal lamina. It may or may not have some cells called pericytes. Pericytes are contractile cells which may lie surrounding a capillary and they can control the luminal size. Capillaries are divided into three types based on the features on their wall. The first type that you see here is a continuous capillary. A continuous capillary has got endothelial cells with a tight junction between them and whatever has to pass through exchange has to pass through and through the cell by transcytosis. The fenestrated capillary has got openings through the endothelial cells which are usually covered by a membrane called a diaphragm. The third type are a discontinuous capillary you can see their walls have large gaps. There are also gaps between adjacent cells. Let's look at further details of these types of capillaries. The first type, the continuous capillary. It's also called the somatic capillary. There's a cut section of a capillary here. You can see this is one endothelial cell and this is the second endothelial cell. So this wall is being formed of two endothelial cells. The nucleus bulges into the lumen. It rests on a basal lamina and it may have a pericyte on its external side. Note that there are no gaps between the cells and there are no gaps within the cells. So this is called a continuous cell, continuous capillary. And whatever has to pass through has to go through the wall by a process called transcytosis. These type of capillaries are found in the skin, connective tissues, muscle, lungs, brain and exocrine glands. The second type is a fenestrated capillary. These are also called visceral capillaries. They have circular fenestrae through and through the cells usually covered by a single membrane called a diaphragm. These are found in tissues where you need a rapid exchange like the intestinal villi, endocrine glands and the pancreas. Sometimes in some tissues like the kidney glomeruli, you get these kind of fenestrated capillaries without a diaphragm where the exchange takes place directly through the fenestrae. The last type of capillary is called the sinusoidal or the discontinuous capillary. It's a special kind. It is larger than the usual capillary 
and there are large gaps within the cell and also between the cells. These large gaps are called pores and there is no diaphragm. This kind of sinusoidal capillary has very sluggish blood flow. A slower blood flow will give you a better exchange of substances. The basal lamina here also may be absent or is very very thin. These kind of sinusoidal capillaries are found in the spleen, liver, bone marrow, anterior pituitary, the parathyroid and the adrenal glands. Let's summarize the capillary types that we have just learnt. First is the continuous capillary, then the fenestrated capillary and last the sinusoidal. Continuous capillary, there are no pores or fenestrae in their walls. Fenestrated have got pores in their walls covered by diaphragms usually. Sinusoidal have large gaps between the endothelial cells and the endothelial cells have large pores with no diaphragms. Basal lamina may be absent. In a continuous capillary, exchange takes place by transcytosis. In fenestrated, exchange takes place by diffusion across the diaphragm. In sinusoidal, exchange takes place directly as there is no diaphragm covering the pores without any barrier. Continuous capillaries are found in muscles, nervous and connective tissues. Fenestrated capillaries are found in endocrine glands, pancreas and intestine. Sinusoidal capillaries are special and they are found in the endocrine glands, bone marrow, liver, lymphoid organs, adrenal glands. We have finished studying arteries and capillaries. Now let's study veins. Veins are larger vessels with thinner walls having a collapsed lumen and they have blood at a lower pressure. The vein walls have less muscle in their walls and they have more of connective tissues. The media of the vein is also much thinner than the tunica media of the artery. The tunica adventitia in a wall of vein is more developed than the tunica adventitia in the arterial wall. If you look at a slide of a large sized vein, so this is the wall of a large sized vein, note the collapsed state of its wall. So the wall collapses and folds on itself. The three layers of the wall are a tunica intima, a thin tunica media and a very thick tunica adventitia. The tunica adventitia has longitudinal bundles of smooth muscle. Another feature of vein is that they have valves in their lumen. What are valves? Valves are semilunar folds of the tunica intima which allow blood to flow in only one direction that is towards the heart. So the valves in the lumen of a vein prevent the blood from a retrograde flow and allow the blood only to pass towards the heart. Since veins have sluggish blood flow and lower pressures, valves are required to maintain unidirectional flow of blood through a vein. If you look at a larger view under high power of a slide of large size vein, we see here the thin tunica intima, a tunica media and a large thick tunica adventitia. What about small sized veins? These are slightly smaller in size, about 1 to 9 millimeters in diameter and their endothelial layer, the subendothelial layer could be absent. This vein also has valves and valves allow unidirectional flow of blood in the vein. The adventitia is well developed and much thicker than the media. What are venules? Venules are smaller sized veins and have a diameter of about 20 to 30 micrometers. The walls have an endothelium, a basal lamina and a very thin adventitia. Pericytes may be present in post capillary venules whereas muscle cells will be present in larger muscular venules. The walls of a venule are permeable to exchanges taking place. 
What is the nutrition and innovation of a blood vessel? The inner layers of a blood vessel get nutrition through diffusion through the layers. The internal elastic lamina is also of a fenestrated type, allowing diffusion of nutrients and oxygen through the walls to supply the inner layers of the blood vessel wall. In larger vessels which have a thicker wall, you will need other sources of nutrition to the outer half of the vessel wall. These are done by the vasa vasorum, which are called vessels in vessels and they supply the outer half of the wall of a blood vessel. The largest vasa vasorum of the body are the coronary arteries. The nerve supply of blood vessels is autonomic. There are unmyelinated nerve fibers which cause vasoconstriction or vasodilatation of the blood vessel as required. Let's talk about microcirculation types other than the capillary. The first is an arteriole. So we see here the arteriole. An arteriole gives off a branch called the metarteriole and around the metarteriole there are smooth muscle cells forming a precapillary sphincter. The precapillary sphincter surrounds the metarteriole and regulates the flow of blood into the capillary plexus. The capillary plexus is made up of anastomosing network of capillaries and this drains into the venules. This type of circulation is a closed circulation through the capillaries. The second type is an arteriovenous anastomosis like you see here. A channel bypassing the capillary bed and directly continuing from the arteriole to the venule. It is also called a thoroughfare channel and it bypasses the capillary network. A third type of system is the arterial portal system which is special and found only in tissues like the kidney glomeruli. The fourth type is a venous portal system like you have in the sinusoids of the liver. Arteriovenous anastomosis as I explained, these are direct channels which bypass the capillary bed and run straight from the arteriole to the venule. There are two types of arteriovenous anastomosis, the patent anastomosis where blood is short circuited from an artery to a vein bypassing the capillary bed or a closed anastomosis where blood passes through a capillary bed only. This type of closed anastomosis where you have a capillary bed is seen in skin of nose, lips, fingers, the external ear, mucous membranes of the elementary tract, the nose and erectile tissues of the penis and clitoris. Let's summarize what we have studied about veins and microcirculation. So we said veins are vessels which carry deoxygenated blood towards the heart. They are thinner walled. They have larger lumen which is collapsed when empty. They have more of a tunica adventitia and a much thinner tunica media. The large sized veins have less muscular tissue and elastic tissue. They have more of fibrous tissue in their walls. They have three coats but they are not very well distinguished from each other. That is the tunica intima, media and adventitia. Veins also have a feature of valves which are not present in arteries. Small or medium sized veins have less layers, they have valves and the adventitia is much well developed. Venules are still smaller, they are the smallest and capillaries drain into them. Their walls have an endothelium, a basal lamina and an adventitia. We have also studied how blood supplies these arteries and veins by two processes. The first is a diffusion from the lumen and the second by special vessels called vasa vasorum like the coronary arteries. Nerve supplies by the autonomic nerves, vasoconstriction or vasodilatation as required. We have also talked about the microcirculation, an arteriole getting into a meta-arteriole and a capillary bed draining into a venule and arteriovenous anastomosing bypassing the capillary bed plexus. The arterial portal system like the glomerulus of kidney 
and the venous portal system like the sinusoids of liver. Let's now come to the clinically applied aspects of today's topic. If you look in this figure here, you see a raised portion of the tunica intima. This is called an atheromatous plaque. This is a procedure called atherosclerosis where fatty cells change and accumulate in the in intima of a blood vessel. Have all of you heard of a heart attack? What is a heart attack? A heart attack is a condition that happens when the blood supply to portions of the heart is stopped by a narrowing of the lumen of the coronary arteries by an atheromatous plaque. So this is the arteromatous plaque that is the cause of a heart attack. Another type of arterial disease is called arteriosclerosis. Here, there is a generalized thickening of the arterial wall and this narrows the lumen and reduces the blood flow through this vessel. Hypertension, all of you must be familiar with this term. It is an increase in the systolic pressure above 140 and the diastolic pressure above 90 millimeters of mercury. There is a pressure overload on the heart leading to more workload for the left ventricle which hypertrophies. The small muscular arteries and arterioles have a contracted lumen due to hyperplasia of the muscle there is increased vascular resistance. This increases the blood pressure in turn. Aneurysm. Aneurysm can occur of any artery. In this figure here, you see an aneurysm of the abdominal aorta. An aneurysm is nothing but a bulging or a dilatation of the vessel wall. And it is sac-like and it could be due to weakness of the wall or due to replacement of elastic fibers by collagen fibers. Commonly seen in the carotid vessels and aorta in old age and it is related with various syndromes. If an aneurysm is not detected on time, it could rupture leading to fatal hemorrhage, especially if it is of the aorta. An angioma, an angioma is a benign tumor of a blood vessel. Hemangioma is of the smaller blood vessels which is of two types. It could be a capillary hemangioma which are vascular birthmarks commonly seen in childhood and they regress later on or it could be a cavernous hemangioma. Another type of disorder is called petechiae wherein you see small pinpoint red or purple dots on the skin or mucous membrane. It's because of broken capillaries. Blood seeps out into the surrounding tissues and it could be due to raised local intravascular pressure seen commonly over the face and the lower legs. Reynolds phenomenon. Reynolds phenomenon is a disease of the arteries where there is episodes of vasospasm. Vasospasm means the lumen of the vessel suddenly goes into a contracted state, a sudden spasm. This will reduce the blood flow to the area that is supplied by the respective vessel. And if it happens in like the digits of the hand because of less blood flow, the digits will become blue because of prolonged lack of oxygen. Then they become red because of sudden vascular dilatation. Thrombosis or thrombus formation in veins. Sometimes a thrombus can develop which is a blood clot Inside the lumen of a vein, especially when the endothelium is damaged, there is an accumulation and aggregation of platelets. This aggregation will obstruct the lumen as you can see here. So that's a vein and this is the valve and over the valve we have a thrombus formation. Now this thrombus in a vein can dislodge and move in the circulation and block another vessel further on. For example, a thrombus formation in the lower limb can proceed upwards through the inferior vena cava and get into the heart and pulmonary circulation. This can cause a pulmonary embolism. So in the pulmonary circulation, if the major pulmonary vessels are blocked by this thrombus, which forms an embolus, it can lead to sudden death. So this becomes a dangerous condition. Another condition of veins is called varicosity. 
Varicose veins are permanently dilated tortuous veins usually affecting the lower limbs seen commonly in pregnancy and also in old age. So let's summarize today's topic that we have studied. We have spoken about the blood vessels histology. Arteries are vessels conducting blood from the heart to various tissues of the body. Veins are vessels which conduct blood from the tissues of the body towards the heart for oxygenation. These vessels have got three basic layers in their wall. Tunica intima, innermost, tunica media, middle and tunica adventitia, outermost. Tunica intima has an endothelium on a basal lamina, subendothelial connective tissue and internal elastic lamina. Tunica media has got varied amounts of smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers. Then there is an external elastic lamina followed by tunica adventitia. This is outermost made up of collagen fibers and forms a sheath supporting the vessel to the surrounding structures. We spoke about the histology of each of these vessels. The large size artery having differences from a medium sized artery because of the large content of elastic fiber in its tunica media. The medium sized artery having less elastic fibers but more muscular fibers in its tunica media and also having a very prominent internal elastic lamina. The smaller sized arteries also called arterioles are of two types, the larger muscular and the smaller terminal. Terminal arterioles branch off into meta arterioles and these enter the capillary plexus. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels. They have a single layer of endothelial cells and they allow exchange to take place between the blood in their lumen and tissues outside their wall. Capillaries are further divided into continuous, discontinuous and fenestrated capillaries. We also studied about veins. Veins are classified into large sized veins, medium sized veins and small sized or venules. Large size having a larger caliber and thicker walls. Veins overall have a larger and a thicker tunica adventitia and a very poorly developed tunica media. We spoke about venules, the larger venules and the smaller venules. We spoke about microcirculation types like AV anastomosis, like uh, the arterial and the venous portal systems that you see in the glomeruli and in the liver sinusoids respectively. With this we end today's topic. Thank you.